Aside from the flashy new features that are coming in the next generations of iOS and macOS, there are lots of little tweaks and features that essentially fix a lot of issues that users have been complaining about over the years. So in this video, we're gonna go over 20 of those new features that should make your life a bit easier. So let's start with macOS Monterey. And one of the biggest features that's taken way too long to implement is the ability to erase a Mac without having to reinstall the operating system. Following in the footsteps of the iPhone and the iPad, the Mac has gained an erase all content and settings option on macOS Monterey. Now the option allows you to erase all user data and user installed apps from your Mac without having to reinstall that macOS operating system. And it makes it so much easier to restore a Mac to like new factory settings. In macOS Monterey, users can now move windows from an external display to their Macs or vice versa, and the windows will automatically adjust and resize to better fit the size of that display. This should prove to be particularly useful when moving windows between a smaller MacBook display and a larger external monitor. You can also use another Mac as an external display via AirPlay. We actually did an entire video about some of the features with AirPlay, and one of these features is AirPlay to Mac allows users to extend or mirror an Apple's device display to another Mac. And we've confirmed that this works, again, on a Mac to Mac basis. Lastly, on macOS Monterey, Apple brings over a key feature from the iPhone to the Mac with low power mode. Low power mode on Mac reduces the system clock speed and the display brightness in order to extend your battery life even further. This means that if you're doing less intensive tasks like watching videos or browsing the web, that you can actually even get more out of your Mac's battery. These next two are not technically macOS or iPadOS features, but they are worth pointing out. The first one is that Apple is finally allowing the HomePod mini to be used as an Apple TV speaker later this year, and it can be set as the default speaker output on your Apple TV 4K. And speaking of tvOS, users can now sign into apps using Face ID or Touch ID on your iPhone, which could be extremely useful for when you're authenticating purchases or just signing into apps and you need to use your phone, which is so much easier than having to remember all of those passwords for your accounts. On the iOS 15 side of things, you can now request refunds directly inside of an app as opposed to having to go inside of the report a problem page on Apple's website. There's a new StoreKit API that allows developers to implement a request, a refund option within their apps. These next two features are actually things that Apple has removed in the past and are now making a triumphant return, like the text selector magnifying glass, for example. Apple has introduced a new version of this magnifying glass for text selection. The new magnifier is a little bit smaller than the original one, and it's a very subtle zoom in effect, but the fact that it has reappeared is likely to be welcomed. Apple also brought back its original wheel picker for selecting times, but also retained the ability to just tap on the time and then enter the numbers in manually via the keyboard if you want to do so. Another hidden tweak is a change in behavior in the App Store, where now screenshots for already installed apps are actually hidden in the App Store search results. So if you've already downloaded Twitter, for example, or Tweetbot like I have here, you're not gonna see those screenshots kind of giving you an example of what the app might look like. But for the apps that I've never installed, you'll see that I have those screenshots here. I can't tell you how many expired boarding passes and tickets I have in my wallet app at times, and iOS 15 makes the cleanup of those old tickets so much easier, and it automatically moves those into an expired list, helping reduce the clutter. You can actually turn this feature off in settings because it does come on by default, and I'm super happy this exists because I no longer have to go in and remove each pass one by one. Now this next one is actually an iPad OS 15 feature, but we'll just sneak it in here anyways. For those Instagram fans, no, you're not getting a native iPad app yet, or maybe ever, but you are no longer stuck with actually having to use it in uh, portrait mode exclusively. You can now actually run that app in landscape orientation if you want to. You can still use portrait mode, but it's so much better to use in landscape. I suppose while we're still on the topic of iPads and iPad OS 15, I do think it's worth mentioning that Apple finally brought over the app library, making it so much easier to clean up and arrange your home screens 
to your liking. Speaking of arranging home screens, this works for both iPad and iOS 15. Uh, inside of App Library, or actually when you um, toggle into the page selection mode, you could choose which ones you wanted to feature or which ones you wanted to hide, but you weren't able to rearrange them to different locations until, of course, now with iOS 15 and iPadOS 15. Apple introduced a premium subscription tier to iCloud called iCloud Plus. And with it comes the ability to give your iCloud mail address a custom domain name and invite family members to use the same domain with their iCloud mail account. So in theory, if I wanted to make my email dan at barbera.com, instead of danbarbera at iCloud.com, I could do that with iCloud Plus iOS 15 lets users who have turned off or erased a device be located via the Find My app. Apple says that you can locate devices even after they've been turned off, a feature that's helpful if a missing device is stolen or disabled, or if a lost device has low battery. Apple is also adding new separation alerts to the Find My app, which will let you know if you leave an Apple device, a device attached to an AirTag, or a Find My enabled third-party device behind. For any item that's in the Find My app, whether it's an AirTag or an Apple device, you can tap into it and select the Notify When Left Behind toggle. This will send an alert if you get out of range of your item. Inside of the Photos app, you can now see the EXIF metadata for images directly on your iPhone. Each image in the Photos app now has a new info button available that displays the image format, the details of the camera used to capture it, and the location where the photo was taken. This next feature we just recently did a video on, so you can click the card here in the upper right corner, and it's the ability to have PC and Android users join in on FaceTime calls via the web. Users can now create a link to FaceTime conversations that can be shared just about anywhere. And using this link, friends and family members who don't have an Apple device can log into a FaceTime call using the web browser. And last but not least, Apple has temporarily expanded iCloud storage in iOS 15 for backing up data and transferring it to a new device. Apple says that the new feature will grant you as much storage as you need to complete a temporary backup for up to three weeks, letting users transfer their apps, data, and settings to a new device using iCloud, even when there's an inadequate amount of storage available. And that's it. These are just some of the new features that Apple has added to these operating systems that will be arriving this fall, but I'd love to hear your thoughts on everything that we just talked about in the comments down below. And before we end today's video, I do wanna give you more information about today's sponsor, OWC. OWC has tons of products for your Mac, and earlier this year, they launched the incredible OWC Envoy Pro Electron SSD. This is OWC's fastest and toughest mini-sized USB-C bus power drive that the company offers, and it's super fast. The drive touts incredible real-world performance due to it being powered by OWC's Aura SSD, offering users super fast transfer speeds. It's incredibly small and can fit in your pocket easily, but it's also built like an absolute tank. Even though it boasts a lot of power, it's still really cool under the hood thanks to that aircraft-grade aluminum housing that really helps dissipate the heat. And for more information about the new Envoy Pro Electron or anything else that OWC has to offer, click the link in the description down below. This has been Dan with Mac Rumors. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you around in the next video.